right. We're about to welcome the last company of the day. Thank you all for sticking with us. Uh, please welcome Nucleus Scientific. Pre presenting our Tyler Ellis and Don Halstead. Hi, I'm Tyler Ellis and we're Nucleus Scientific. We've developed a whole suite of hardware and software technologies that will significantly improve batteries from smartphones to electric vehicles. Our first innovation is an intelligent energy system that reduces charging times from hours to minutes and extends lifetimes considerably. Because let's face it, we all know that this is what a bad day looks like. We've all had to send a critical email or pull up directions to an important meeting only to have our smartphone die right when we need it most. And we end up finding charging locations in all sorts of interesting places, and then we have to wait at least an hour for our device to charge up. So why is this still the case? Unfortunately, over the past century, charging strategies and battery energy densities really haven't changed all that much. Despite all of the recent innovation, especially in lithium ion technology, energy densities have improved less than 3% annually using the same old charging strategies. At Nucleus Scientific, I'm pleased to say we're going to change that. Our team is a mix of PhDs in chemistry, physics, and engineering, and many of us are from MIT. We spent the last eight years in the lab designing a whole suite of energy storage and optimization technologies, and today I'm introducing our first commercializable technologies. We have both a hardware and software solution. Our software contains sophisticated battery models that output an optimal charging algorithm that actually changes with time, and our hardware contains considerable uh, innovation in the miniaturization of power conversion technology. So let's look at this in action. Can we switch to the demo? This is a, a power bank that we've designed that contains enough energy to charge a smartphone about seven times. We're going to plug it in, and as you can see, we're starting at 0%. Once this reaches 14%, we'll have enough energy to be able to fully charge a smartphone. So let's come back to this in a few minutes. Can we switch back to the slides, please? So as an example of the innovation we've done on the software side, let's first look at an example of what a traditional charging approach looks like for pretty much all the cells on the market today. Throughout most of the charging process, the current is held constant until the voltage gets right below the maximum, and then the current is tapered off to get the last bit of energy into the cell. Our charging process is considerably different. As you can see, it's also a lot shorter. In order to do this, our software actually pulls in data from the battery, uses it to update our battery models, and then that in turn controls both the voltage and the current for the cell in order to implement our optimized charging approach. This software also has significantly enhanced health status monitoring so that if any parameters like temperature or voltage get to a level where damage could actually occur to the cell, the charging process backs off. That actually enables a charging process that could be even safer than the charging processes that are used okay. today. Perfect, Finally, this technology also can be incorporated into the batteries that are on the market today or combined with our proprietary hardware for even further enhanced performance. As an example of what we've done on the hardware side, on the left you see a standard 100 watt power converter, a big black brick that's commercially available. On the right you see our 100 watt power converter which is actually incorporated into our power bank prototype. We've been able to achieve over a six times volume reduction and a six and a half times mass reduction compared to what's typically in the market. We did this through a very unique board layout design that has incredibly high uh, heat transfer capabilities and uses high operating frequencies. By combining our hardware and software, we can actually charge cells incredibly quickly. The upper white line shows us charging up a cell which is almost twice as large as an iPhone 6 in only five minutes. The lower red line is the trace of a normal iPhone 6 charge, and at the end of this exact same time period, it only manages to charge up about 15%. That's good. And that's not even the upper speed limit of what our technology can do. This measured lab data shows us charging up a battery which contains the same amount of energy as nine smartphones in under 100 seconds. If we double this charge time to 200 seconds, we can double the normal battery lifetime. So I mean, we see this is obviously great for speed, but what about lifetime? I mean, the conventional wisdom is that the faster you charge a battery, the shorter the lifetime is going to be. Well, I'm pleased to say that with our technology, we can simultaneously charge fast and extend the lifetime. The lifetime for the battery I just showed you is 300 cycles. We can expend it three and a half, or excuse me, four and a half times up to 1,400 cycles. So other than what we have here, what else do you need to charge a smartphone in a couple of minutes? 
Well, the answer is actually a new connector. The cable used to charge your smartphone is now the remaining bottleneck in being able to increase the charging speed. And there are new uh, standards that are out there, such as USB-C and inductive charging. But until those uh, standards are adopted, you're going to be stuck with what you more or less have now. In order to, since the cables of today are limiting the charging uh, process, we built a uh, power bank prototype. Standard units require six to eight hours to charge up a 10 amp hour unit from 15 to 85% or about five smartphone chargers. And the fastest competitor on the market takes hour and a half. This unit is able to do it in 15 minutes. We've had this independently verified by an industry leader in testing, inspection, and verification. And if we switch to the prototype, we have pulled off enough energy from the prototype in order to fully charge a smartphone in just the three minutes that I've been up here talking. Can we go back to the slides? So clearly the ability to charge up your smartphone in a couple of minutes is great, but this technology has even wider applications, like enabling the charging of an electric vehicle in the same amount of time that it takes to pump a tank of gas. The global battery industry is massive and it's growing, and it's driven predominantly by the growth in the portable electronics and automotive industries. Our plan is to propel these industries by licensing our technology to companies that have a massive reach in the space in order to get to market quickly and leverage the sales, manufacturing, and distribution expertise of the ex existing firms, leaving us to do what we do best, which is technology. Consumers want this. So companies that are interested in incorporating our technology into their products should contact me, Tyler, at NucleusScientific.com, and we're looking forward to bringing the future of energy technology to market. So go to our website to learn more. Thank you. All right. So which application are you going to focus on first? Cell phones or cars or what? Uh, so I think our initial application is going to be in the uh, consumer electronics space, mainly because the uh, development cycle is considerably shorter. I mean, that being said, in order to introduce a new consumer electronics product, it's still about a year from inception to actually being able to ship and being in stores, but that's probably a faster go-to-market strategy. You take out every, maybe all of us and people in this room who use their phone constantly. Don't normal people just, they, they kind of use their, their cell phone throughout the day, they run out of battery at night, they charge it overnight. Eight hour charge time is not a big deal for them. Isn't that somewhat the case? Well, for, uh, for the overnight case, yes, where it does last. However, uh, many of the people that we spoke with are very heavy users. And I've actually noticed uh, a number of folks that actually carry around a spare battery pack with them. Actually, several people backstage have a yep. spare battery pack plugged into the bottom of their phone. That all of doesn't us. last all day. <laughs> Uh, so I think that there's a very, uh, a very large appetite for this technology, and I think it'd be widely applicable. Also, given the fact that uh, you can potentially charge up batteries on, on the order of a few minutes, you can actually afford to carry less battery with you. You know, if it only takes three minutes to charge up, then you can quick get another uh, fill-up of your phone and then go about the rest of the day and actually reduce the mass that you carry with you on the phone. That's interesting. Can you, can you talk a little bit about competing technologies? I mean, the new uh, Samsung Galaxies have a rapid um, charge. I think there's about 20 minutes for four hours that you can just do a quick charge on them. So there's, and I think those are lithium ion. Um, let's talk a little bit about the competition and how this um, stacks up. Sure. Uh, so, I mean, the important metric in that is that it's uh, four hours of use time. It's not actually four hours to charge the entire battery. Uh, with the, um, with many of these units here, I've seen uh, performance increases of like tens of percents, but uh, the ability to actually fully charge up your battery on the order of a couple of minutes is uh, a level that I've not seen implemented in any other startup out there. Uh, there is the one defining feature is the full charge. The defining feature is the full charge, but I mean, the fact that you can charge more quickly, but then also extend the lifetime. I mean, if you can extend the lifetime of batteries four and a half X compared to what it currently is now, uh, that's a pretty significant uh, you know, economic savings as well as environmental savings for reducing in, uh, of waste. This is a huge idea, and if you could charge a Tesla in two minutes, you would you know, change that game as well as, as a couple of others. Why focus on a licensing model? Why not just build your own business and then sell it to Tesla? <laughs> well, uh, so as I mentioned in the beginning part of the talk, this is actually uh, the beginning of a whole suite of technologies. So this is just the first one that we're actually introducing today. Uh, but the company has been working in a wide variety of other areas. So, you know, there is more to come. But this, in this particular business, we thought that being able to uh, commercialize it rapidly and develop new revenue streams, you know, from the immediate uh, integration into consumer electronics was a very good way to go in order to be able to b build a sustainable business and, you know, pay all of the salaries and uh, cover operational costs. 
So what makes your tech, the actual battery cell and the cord, unique? Uh, so the uniqueness is in a couple of aspects. Uh, on the software side, it's a tr the first truly intelligent charging system that we've seen. So it actually takes in data from the battery and then uses that to actually adapt the charging algorithm. The charging algorithm from the beginning of life in the cell is different from the end of life in the cell. And it's also different if the temperature is higher outside as opposed to lower outside. And by having all of that information coming in, you can constantly update the software uh, or the, the optimal charging approach in order to maximally extend the lifetime of the battery. Uh, and on the hardware side, it's significant shrinking of a lot of the uh, power converter electronic components, just because you know, if you're going to charge up uh, your cell phone in uh, you know, a very short period of time, you don't want to carry a power converter that's the size of a massive brick. You want to have something small, because right now the iPhone 10-watt uh, USB converter is just a little tiny brick. You have to get something close to that that consumers would actually be willing to carry with them and then plug into the wall. So I, I'm, I'm not a battery specialist by any length, uh, any stretch of the imagination. But you read all the time that that's the big bottleneck in any device that uh, requires a battery. And, yep. uh, and you, you, you talked about that. Uh, I, I can only imagine that there's a ton of people, or a lot of people, who are working on the same problem. Mm -hmm. And so why, why will new technology not become a commodity uh, in, in the midterm? Well, I think we have a very protectable approach. Uh, so that be, I didn't talk about IP, but we have all of our IP completely separately owned by the company. Um, but on the, uh, the software charging approach itself, we can actually encrypt it and put it onto microcontrollers, and then you know, we can actually control that information. Uh, but that being said, the software charging uh, approach is actually different for every type of cell. So even if you're able to uh, find the optimal charging approach for one type of cell, it doesn't actually apply to any other type of cell. Mm -hmm. So I think from that perspective, it's also uh, a pretty highly protectable uh, technology. On the hardware side, obviously you can crack open a power converter and see that the way you laid it out. Uh, we have patent coverage on that, but you know there's there's more that you can do on the software side. I'm interested in knowing the time frame for commercialization because with startups, I often that are have of a, that are of a faster, better type of uh, uh, business model. I find that the faster, better isn't quite what they said it would be. The existing technology sort of start catching up. We're already seeing on a number of the Android phones that are out there turbocharging capabilities where. You know, I can get in 15 minutes 85% charge on a Droid Turbo, for instance. So, and I'm assuming, and that's been out for six plus months, so you're assuming there's a next generation of that turbocharging capability. So when you come to market, where do you think the state of the art with traditional evolved technologies will be relative to where you are? Well, I mean, I, uh, compared to all of the benchmarks that we've done in the industry as far as the uh, charging rates that have been introduced as well as discussed by a wide variety of the companies, we've not actually found any other approaches that come close. There have been some other uh, discussions of very early stage laboratory results, which were promising. But uh, given that we've been at this for eight years, I mean, we've had the promising lab results, and then the time it takes to optimize those lab results and then put it into an engineering prototype like what we have here you know, is actually a very significant period of time. Uh, and that was a big part of the reason why we waited to come to market uh, uh, when we did, because the state of the technology is such a radical advance compared to what currently exists. We needed to have an engineering prototype to say, hey, we can actually you know, fit it into a product that you know, we could integrate and sell in the market. So that was a, a big part of the reason why. What do you anticipate the cost to be for the consumer product relative to what else is on the market today? Uh, so you, given that there's an additional software component and computational component, there are a few additional controllers compared to you know, a normal CCCV charger that you would have today. Uh, we think the cost of those are going to be fairly minimal. Uh, I mean, so this is an engineering prototype. This is not meant to be cost optimized for a consumer type of product. Uh, but we were able to get the cost down to this unit of uh, less than $60. So with uh, going through a robust cost reduction exercise of swapping out uh, components that can do just as good of a job, uh, and then as well as redesigning the exterior packaging, you know, I think you will uh, be very competitive. Can you give us a little bit of background on yourselves? Yes, uh, so I uh, did a uh, bachelor's, master's, and PhD in nuclear science and engineering from MIT, and then uh, did an MBA at Harvard uh, Business School <laughs> just this past year. And then I was also working at uh, uh, TerraPower, which was uh, Bill Gates' back startup designing a new nuclear reactor concept. So I've been at startups for, for quite a while in both business development as well as leading the engineering design teams. 
In my background, I'm, I'm the chief operating officer. Um, I got my, my uh, bachelor's in mechanical engineering and MBA from Cornell University way back in the dark ages and spent about 35 years working in technology industries from, uh, from IBM to 3Com to venture-backed. So I bring the sort of the big company experience to the company. And what's the genesis of this? How did this, because I, I was expecting you to say that you've been working on this for quite a while, but if you just came out of your MBA last year, I mean, what's the, give us the path, how did you get here? Uh, so, I mean, the, the company was founded by MIT professor Ian Hunter, and he's been focusing on uh, developing a whole wide variety of technologies that really uh, significantly improve, you know, energy utilization and transportation and a wide variety of other industries. Uh, my, my personal passion has always been in energy. I was previously working in baseload. Now I care about uh, using it in consumer led devices as well as transportation industries. You know, for, so for me, it's staying in the same industry, staying on the same focus, but still being able to have uh, an incredible impact. Interesting. You said you're working on a bunch of, uh, of, of, uh, of other type of technologies as well. Are they all battery technologies? Uh, so, I mean, there's, there's a wide variety of different technologies we have. Uh, I mean, nominally, we, we try to keep it as a a policy to not discuss the innovations that we've developed until we can actually put it into uh, real engineering prototypes, uh, just because I mean a lot of the inventions are uh, are pretty radically advanced compared to what the current state of the art is. So we're going to try and do it in a, a stage type introduction. Do you have a go-to-market timeline for the charger? Is there any consumer strategy around that? Yes. So I'm uh, a big part of the reason for me coming here. <laughs> was uh, mainly to meet a wider variety of companies that are interested in incorporating this technology into their devices. Uh, so we've been currently talking to a wide variety of companies about actually incorporating this technology into a number of their devices. So, uh, you know, we're hoping to be able to get to market very soon. Did, did Mofi like it? <laughs> well, we uh, unfortunately don't want to discuss, uh, you know, particular discussions that are going on now. We, you know, prefer waiting to have a, a proper announcement based on whatever product we're deciding to collaborate on. We're unfortunately out of time. That was nucleus scientific. Really, that really neat stuff. <laughs>